Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I'm I was kind of surprised uh, because during my uh, like regular review of topics in Python community, I have noticed that nobody uh, like told nobody share knowledge about GraphQL and the 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 weirdest thing that it's kind of new technology, but like it like it could die soon because of some items I, I'm going to share with you or could not. And I really want to like share the information about GraphQL as wide as possible. And uh, I'm not going to uh, dig deep into details about GraphQL uh, because it's not really complicated and API is open and we live in an era with information that's very accessible and, and you have access to everything. But what I'm going to do, do during this presentation, I'm going to just like point you to main advantages, some basic stuff I'm going to convince you that it's super easy to start work with. It's super easy to maintain. It might have some problems, and if you um, if you have those like problems, not the problems, but if you have those requirements on your project that not really fit to GraphQL requirements, so it like you you would consider to use something else than, than GraphQL. Also, I'm going to like give you some background about history of GraphQL and holy wars because like we we like we human beings so like we like holy wars. So about the agenda. Oh yeah sorry. Uh, okay three W, what, why, and when. So we will speak about the what is it, what is what the monster it is, uh, why you should use GraphQL, and it's very important when you should or should not use GraphQL. And also there are um, open followers from different developers that like maintain or try to defend on solutions or just don't like the <clears throat> GraphQL solution and I'm going to point you to all items like not all sorry it will be like most of the items that uh, like floating in the air around GraphQL uh, that's like like peers uh, flying into GraphQL sites and so on but what we are going to do mostly it would be demo so I have like three I'm not going to show anything like set up locally because it doesn't make any sense. I would not have enough time to prepare like good scope, but what I did, I have found like three main examples of working demo, like working, it's not like demo, it's like real application with access through GraphQL. So what is, what, oh man, it's so slow. Um, yeah, so what is GraphQL? Uh, I forget, forgot to mention here uh, that GraphQL is not REST. It's not like it fully against the idea of REST, of changing the state, is because the main idea of uh, GraphQL is to help you to build up API of 80, like 80 level API. I think it's like 80 level for it like outdated mem, because in WoW you could build person much like higher level. Anyway, so uh, what it allows you to do is to build API uh, where a user could control request data. So GraphQL, where QL is, it stands for, stands for query language, uh, I will show you a couple examples. So basically, uh, when you ask to to API like give me some object, the GraphQL allows you to specify what exactly do you want to know about this object. 
and it's kind of cool and I sh will show you why it's like why it's really cool and why we like end up with this idea and like GraphQL is about like filtering data and providing you all required tools for for such filtering and the the main idea so basically the Facebook uh, like stands for the GraphQL initially and I think it started in 2012 like six years seven years ago but as an open source uh, project it um, it started in 2015 on some conference when they like open the source code for GraphQL and everybody will like will start be able to use it and right after it GitHub announced and that uh, GitHub going to use GraphQL instead of the regular REST uh, RESTful API or just REST API and I'm going to show you that example and Netflix going to switch fully to GraphQL and there are a lot of big projects that are going to use this data and uh, what else cool about this uh, you all familiar with NoSQL databases so, and the main idea of NoSQL database is the normalization of data. Yeah, so you will have an object like uh, with everything inside this, this object. And as you got used uh, with REST, you need to specify what exactly do you need. Like, give me this object or give me some parameter from this object. And you deep dive, you like uh, dive deep in but you all the time you send the separate query. <clears throat> in GraphQL, you will just send all hierarchy of items you, uh, you need and GraphQL will provide this to you. The re really, really, really great support of languages and frameworks, but we don't care about all frameworks and languages, we care about only Python. And it's really good in Python, it's like, awesomely good in Python and I will show you some very short example <clears throat> about libraries that uh, you will use for this and so on and there are very small like item um, if you full stack developer uh, and you want to introduce uh, GraphQL into your project be ready that front-end team will uh, will say like, okay, we are not going to implement GraphQL because it might be painful for, for client <clears throat> a bit. So be ready, be ready because if you full stack, you're going to cover this part as well. Uh, but for the backend side, it's, it's extremely easy. Um, what I like in GraphQL as well is dynamic, specific dynamic specification and the easiest document generation I ever seen like the the easiest and like I'm working with like current on my current project I work uh, I work with uh, REST plus and Flask so the like it allows you to generate documentation pretty much like like uh, GraphQL does but it start like it, it has a lot of constraints and do not allow you to like specify a lot of cool things like uh, classes and so on and still uh, swagger spec that generated split it to two, two parts one part related to models second to rest and so on and so on so it's very hard to like put everything together and then generate the documentation and so on and so on so like in GraphQL, you will have everything in one place and it's like, it's really cool. And like someone, someone calls GraphQL as a REST killer, but I don't think so. And we will speak about this on um, like on the haters section. And like, it's cool. It might kill REST, but just for your project. So you, you may end up with not using REST at all and everything would be through the one uh, GraphQL server and that's all. 
So I will give you some examples. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it messed with order of slides. So this is a regular like REST requests uh, you got used to. So you like, okay, give me users and give me all like some information about user ID, then give me all repositories for user ID, add some repository to user ID, put some like put start to some repository, assign people to that repository. And the problem that in HTTP 1.1, uh, all the time you need to like make new connections. So basically you need to, um, if you have a like very big time between requests, you need to create basically new TCP, TCP like, uh, oh, someone, sorry. So new connection and it's very like heavy operation. That's uh, mostly all IO. Uh, so it's very heavy operation. In HTTP 1.1, we have keep alive and it allows you to save sometimes. Um, but anyway, you you are going to do like this and you need to do more and more and each request should be separate and the information you will receive uh, is like, uh, I forgot this word, like divided by small, small parts and you like, anyway, you're going to work with JavaScript. So you need to put everything together and so on and so on. So yeah. So in GraphQL, so everything you need to do is just uh, as a from the requester side, you need to define this. So you need to define special uh, word query, and then you need to define model that you request, and you need to define fields you want to see about this. And it will return uh, it uh, it, re it will return you only user uh, all users, and but only with ID and name for these users for this user. Uh, then, for example, you need to get the specific user by specific ID and you need to um, get all repositories for that user, like all repositories. So everything you need to do is just update query like this. Then you need to, like, the, the uh, funniest part, I, like, during like couple couple last years, I've seen a lot of presentation and uh, like, uh, some articles about GraphQL, but mostly all of them concentrated on getting data. But for some re for some reason, they skip uh, like uh, data mutation. Like uh, how cool is it to like update data using GraphQL? So as you see, everything you need to do is just. Uh, like specify this mutation. One one funny item. So basically, you can define all those items in JavaScript on the front end side as a single object, and you could have like separate mutations, a couple mutations, couple queries, and you can specify the name here, like after a reserved for query or mutation and before bracket then you can like basically you specify kind of function or something and you could specify the input parameter so basically you you could have the one query and uh you could run this query with special parameter and then just use this very sorry variable and use this variable here uh so what you see here i'm going to send one request that will create i will like show you in real life this uh, this example basically. <clears throat> I'm going to create a repository for like for me uh, with name new visibility public and here I define uh, data that will be returned. So as you know when you post or put data you like you have to return all object because it's defined by rest or you should return like status code no content and empty body. Here you could do the same. Basically, 
you could specify a like, list of fields that you want to see after updating this repository. So basically, you could, you could have like just an ID because anyway, you're going to make some separate request and you need to own the ID and that's all. So you don't need to have this name or something. And right after it, I'm going to start uh, add the start to another project that already exists by ID. So I'm going to make like two requests. Request number one, give me all repositories for user not with ID number one. And here I'm going to update repository, uh, like create new repository and add star to existing one. So I'm going to have two requests instead of like at least four. Um, as for Python, okay, I'm terribly sorry. It's for some reason it works so slow. Well, well, yeah, yeah. So in Python, um, only one thing you need to know and you need to use is Grafan. Uh, don't mess up with Grafana. So Grafan is just a, like a library that allows you to integrate GraphQL with your server, a web application framework. And basically it provides all tools to like define all those items I just showed, uh, I, I just shown. So basically you're, you 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 will see this very similar to like some ORM or some like RESTful uh, items or database because like basically it's more like more about database and as you see like in a SQL LCM or Django ORM you have schema you have model you have query uh, you don't have mutation but it's pretty much the same as a query but insert and the reason why we have this, uh, these items uh, is before ending up with GraphQL, Facebook uh, played with uh, inline queries inside the URL. So basically the, the first version before GraphQL, it would be like, it was like nine years ago or eight years ago. Uh, they start playing with this, um, like putting insert, uh, select, and so on and so on inside the query, but uh, inside the, uh, like as a query parameter inside the URL, but it was not effective. It was very hard to maintain. It was very hard to generate. It was very hard to make up it uh, like agnostic to framework that uh, it should be integrated with or database because, uh, it would be very hard to integrate with any NoSQL data uh, base, uh, databases and so on and so on. So they start playing with like different approach and um, they played with RPC approach. So as you will see a bit later, uh, GraphQL is more like, like, like gRPC if you're familiar with this. Uh, so it like it really close to it, but uh, when you define all functions or queries, not in uh, XML, but in JSON. So it's very like rough comparison, like root, uh, don't take it like as a, like at the source of truth. It's just a my, like, how to say, it. it's something that I've noticed, like very like sh shady, uh, like shady differences and shady like uh, similarities. So uh, what you need to do with Grafen in Python is just to define schema. So we needed to like check the like like in uh, it's just a contract. Okay. So the best uh, the best comparison to uh, REST API would be schema is like a contract that you need to follow. Model is just the object. Uh, uh, object representation of schema that uh, you will work with on the Python side. And query and mutation, basically the same. So queries about get data, mutation is about update and, and return data. 
uh, it will look like nope. Very, very rough example. So basically, uh, uh, you need to just first of all you need to uh, install Grafana. Then you need to define this query. Then, like, basically you have an object like hello or something, uh, and then uh, you like everything you need to do for each item. This is something I don't really like uh, in uh, in Grafana. Uh, for each like object attribute in some attributes, you need to have a resolver. So if you're going to support a lot of objects, like like really a lot uh, different objects, so it might be hard for you to like to have proper resolver for each of them, and be like be careful with this. Then you define the schema for this query. So then schema will be like auto generated, and uh, now you can have some tests. So basically, everything you have. Uh, simple model like simple object hello then you define the schema then you define the uh, query class where you define resolver for this so anytime you request hello you will get world world um, as a result and as you see in this example you like request give me hello object and the backend will give the graphql api will give you world uh, as for integration with existing frameworks, uh, the best integration uh, GraphQL has with Django, which is not really me, and I think it would not surprise you as well. Um, the best integration because it integrates like with every components that's required for this. As for other frameworks, I could highlight the the simplest one. A flask that really quite used. I was like recently I was crushed in Pyramid, but for some reason I didn't get anything new about Pyramid and like it's not really growing well. But as for Flask, as you see, we have Sonic, we have a lot of frameworks, uh, we have support of like many cool stuff, <clears throat> which is awesome and I like really well. And as you see here, everything you need to do. It's just to add rule GraphQL. And all your communication with GraphQL server will, will be like slash GraphQL slash like slash GraphQL slash maybe something else, but basically just GraphQL and send request and that's all. And we you just create view, provide schema, provide some like interfaces. Do you need it or not? Will we have, will we have the fancy UI? I will show you a bit later or not. So uh, that's all about what. Uh, do you have any question about the like initial GraphQL stuff that I just uh, shared with share with you? Uh, so could you show the slide with the query uh, class? And you mean that we need to define a resolver for each uh, field in output? Yeah, for the square. It's uh, hello, it's output field. No, hello is more like your object. So basically, you define the resolver for objects, not for all uh, arguments. It would be like extremely bad. Uh, in most cases, you need a resolver only for objects. So uh, imagine that, uh, so basically, as in REST, in any object-like uh, models, you will have object that uh, aggregates or like compose from other objects and so on mm -hmm. and so on. So basically here, you need to resolve to other objects. If you add resolver to attribute, it means that you want to manage this attribute in some different way. So I will show you the, like this side slide. Do you see that? I could give some parameters to function, or I could uh, give like this one. So mm -hmm. what the resolver needs, uh, we need resolver to handle like context, handle attributes, and so on and so on. 
in most cases, all attributes will have simple types like string, integer, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean another uh, thing. So, uh, for example, uh, in our case, query it's some function to execute inside of GraphQL, yeah. and hello, it's an object uh, which will be returned from that query. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, to return this hello object, we need to implement this resolver. Yes. Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Ah. Oh, okay. And is it possible to uh, somehow generate uh, these resolvers, for example, create another class and extend query with uh, another class to somehow generate the resolvers based on a requested uh, object? Thank you. I, I, I totally forgot to include it into my slides. So yeah, it's possible. Uh, there are two major libraries uh, that you definitely use. Uh, or used to use Django ORM and SQL Alchemy. Mm -hmm. So basically, GraphQL is more like a proxy between like database uh, and the user interface. Uh, in some cases, some minor calculation required, but anyway. So basically, if you already have defined models as ORM, like Django ORM models or SQL Alchemy models, there are uh, like libraries that allows you using meta classes generate resolver from models. So basically, everything you need to do is just to define your models uh, somewhere, and in query you will not need to have any resolvers because because in query you will able to using this model just provide the base schema base base, mm -hmm. base model, and it will generate those resolvers by like just uh, converting the model from SQL Alchemy to model uh, uh, like to JSON that you will see on the GraphQL. So well, you you could yeah. read about this, but yeah, there are a lot of possibilities to like simplify the code on the Python side. So as I as I mentioned in the like in invitation to this uh, event, the GraphQL is cool, but only if you Python though. For other languages, not such rightful. In Go, I think in Go, uh, Go has very nice support of GraphQL as well. But anyway, I hope you will stay with Python. Okay, so why do you need why do you need to use uh, GraphQL? It's cool. You uh -huh. try at least. Uh, it helps, like as I told, uh, as I said. It has great integration with Django and Alchemy. And I was about like imagine how cool it would be with MongoDB. And I like searched some information about this, and that's awesome. So basically, you just have a couple proxy like query classes, and you could have the schema that represents document in MongoDB. And you could you could query params from MongoDB as is, and it's so cool. And if you have this, and if you have like, uh, if after this presentation you're going to like try this, uh, and you use MongoDB, try to find the information about integration, or if you were a place uh, like measure enough with Mongo with Mongoose or other like libraries. Uh, like you could try to write some adapters to like to get the, the data from MongoDB according to request arguments uh, from uh, GraphQL. Uh, it's easy to produce because basically everything you need to do is just uh, like JSON. Uh, it might hard to integrate it on the front end from the beginning. Uh, as for backend, as I showed, uh, as I shown, it's very easy to add uh, for integrate with any framework. And uh, I forgot. I, ah, yeah. And the very interesting thing is uh, GraphQL libraries on the front end, uh, like supports JS6 and online generation templates very well. And I even 
uh, saw some examples when on the template side, the GraphQL query is defined, but after like rendering the template, uh, it converts to like Windows like, dot uh, some elements equal and already uh, return JSON. So it will return once during initialization of template, and it's cool as well. But it needs to be configured. Uh, the main problem that one of the problems that uh, GraphQL resolves is over or under fetching like what so um, I'm sorry I'm like didn't have enough time to prepare like cool graphics uh, cool plots about this but like Facebook uh, tried to uh, fix the problem of different clients so imagine you have mobile phone laptop laptop with bad Wi-Fi uh, PC I don't know, microwave that you want to use to access your Facebook account or something. So all those clients require a different set of data. And for the REST API, you need to define like a lot of parameters, like a lot. Uh, you need to support every single query parameter like separately. If it's not the case for you, you need to add more resources, more views, as, as you might call it, uh, and so on. So it's a problem. And even then, if you have like a mobile phone, the REST API will, according to the specification, uh, because it doesn't have a receipt, a receipt uh, recommendation, sorry, it's not specification, it's a recommendation. So according to recommendation, you need to return all objects. If you request the object, you need to return entire object. If you return only partially object, you need to specify it somewhere. So everything should be like really obvious, but this uh, this should be supported and made maintained. And it's kind of problem to implement in REST. So as I like as I shown you, it's very easy to control these. Uh, like number of fetching attributes for from the client side and uh, basically client decides I need this 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 and this as I told you I really like that your hierarchy of all objects or one single object at least in one place and I will show you that uh, cool uh, document generation uh, generated document um, as I told it's client agnostic so it doesn't really care uh, who will work with you and uh, it works with the everything that they provide you um, if, if, when, if it was not convinced you to at least try uh, I will send this presentation and you will you could go through the what section once again and check because like for me it, it was like a couple years ago it was wow I think it was two years ago when I firstly uh, heard about GraphQL. Uh, so yeah, at least try. And if you see that, like, that you mostly maintain hierarchy of one or two objects, you probably might consider might consider to switch to GraphQL in your project uh, to reduce number of API resources and API calls to to backend. If it like matters to you. Uh, well, so don't believe if anyone anyone tells you like GraphQL is a solution for all problems. No, uh, there are a lot of restrictions for GraphQL. There are a lot of items that uh, you need to like take to the like how to say count with uh, because you might end up with the worst solution so in some cases rest will work better and um, if you uh, we will speak about uh, http version 2 and http version 3 a bit uh, later uh, you will see that in some cases graphql will lose like completely loose. So let's go through the list of items. First of all, uh, 
you need to know about GraphQL, like all features. Uh, there are cool features like Reliant, there are cool, uh, cool features like, like proxy and, and so on and so on, like uh, agnostic of server. So basically uh, for GraphQL, it doesn't really care if you have like separate RESTful APIs, like a lot of RESTful, RESTful API services that you get the information from or separate databases and so on. It doesn't really care. If you have a client, if you have models, you can do everything you want. But uh, you need to understand all constraints and you need to look through the documentation of GraphQL really carefully because like that's what I don't really like about GraphQL documentation, like official documentation, like all Facebook related stuff. Uh, even RegJS is very like bad documented. So you need to read everything, not read by the like diagonally. On, on diagonal, like all developers do. Uh, read carefully every single sentence because it might has in, it might have information that might like convince you to oh I definitely going to take it or ah this one small items prevents me from taking this into like applying it into my project. Uh, business logic is like uh, when you when you can use it, uh, when business logic is kind of complicated, uh, has a lot of nested objects, but it's still going around like single object at nested level is not really deep. Because imagine that situation that you have only one uh, one object and everything you have is just a nested and nestedness uh, would be like level ten. So the, the deepest level, like deepness is then. And if you're just going to connect it with database, imagine how deep will be insert, how slow it would be for you. So consider about this as well. Um, be careful uh, with this split to separate objects uh, and so on and so on. But if you have the couple objects and mostly you dig deep, into those objects, not really deep, but still, uh, it would be, I think, easier for you to uh, use GraphQL because you need to just define models connected with uh, ORM or other clients, like REST API clients that work with JSON, and run, and that's all. Uh, caching problem. So the, I think most, the, the most, uh, the weakest uh, point for GraphQL, caching. Uh, as you know, caching doesn't like the like dynamics. And take into account that you, like, first of all, it doesn't have caching on the, uh, like, on the layer side, on the, uh, like, application layer side, or, uh, like, on, on like on application layer side. So if you want to have caching, you need to implement caching by yourself. And even then, like imagine that caching here will look like indexing in database. So uh, remember that you don't really want to have indexes for all options, all like uh, all different requests. So you need to define what are you going to cache. And yeah, that's that's the real problem. And you, uh, if you're considering use, uh, if you consider to use caching, um, be careful with this and GraphQL. Uh, very nice thing uh, here, as I mentioned, you might use different source of uh, knowledge, source of data, and it would be different kind of. And uh, imagine that. Not imagine, I think some of them use this like proxy, proxy service or ag aggregation service, uh, sandwich service, someone call it. Uh, on, my, on one of my projects, we used to call it BLT. Uh, this is kind of sandwich by beacon latest tomato because we used to integrate it with three separate RESTful API services. So if you use this, this service could be simply wiped out and changed with substitute with GraphQL service. And it would be much efficient for you uh, to gather data from different sources and to be able to accept them through the one query. 
uh, believe me, it's really cool. Uh, hypermedia. So if you don't don't know what the hypermedia is, please read about this. Uh, the coolest the coolest thing in uh, in REST that I like really well because it al it allows you to explore uh, your REST API from the client side and automate integration back and front end. Um, but as you see here, take into account that the query goes through the payload data in the request. Uh, I think it like, yeah, so it would not be possibly implemented through the hypermedia. Uh, so basically you could not insert links to another object inside the response for your query. That's kind of impossible in current solution. And I really, I think it's not, it's not going to be implemented soon, like, like really soon. And uh, the last part is security. And saying security, I mean more like um, authorization checking and stuff like this. Uh, in some cases, you might restrict access to like some deeper elements. So imagine you may have access to users, but might not have access to uh, like repositories or uh, other thing like this. And you need to maintain this manually, like really manually. And in these cases, you might, might have some resolvers for this, separate libraries, and it might not be such obvious as, e as it is for REST, where you just use API for some get and then filtering data. Uh, because if you request give me repositories, but you don't have access to repository, you're going to get an error or empty repositories or something like this. So you need to handle it manually. Um, yeah, so a couple words about haters and why they think that uh, GraphQL is a bad guy. Uh, have you heard about Vulcane? It's a REST solution that uh, supports HTTP version 2. And so there, there are a couple articles and tweets that uh, just hate. Uh, put some bad thing on the fan uh, about GraphQL developers and GraphQL users. Uh, why do you have? Why do you need GraphQL if, like, we already have HTTP version two, and we have Vulkane, and you could handle many requests in scope of one session, so you don't need to uh, open socket every time. It's already open, and it supports server push. So basically, we'll give you information just before you even request that, and it have like a lot of like streams and so on. So I think the main problem in this holy war is uh, they understood idea of GraphQL in a bad way. So they they think that GraphQL is about to save in like number of requests. It's partially true, but the most item that like the like the the most valuable item in GraphQL, from my humble opinion, is the client controls data, client control data. The I think that this is the best part. And as for REST API, it would be sorry, it would be very hard to implement if you want to like be able to get all queries. So basically, you need to implement views uh, for every single attributes or have this query attribute, but you will ruin the idea of REST because it works with the object and business logic and so on. So it's an open holy war, but uh, if you have some friends or uh, mates that think in the same way, don't even try to convince them uh, in another opinion because it, it, it's just kind of impossible. I tried. The HTTP number, number one. <laughs> Again, uh, this for like how to explain to you. Um, imagine the uh, remember on the first slide I showed uh, I shown that if you want to get the user number one, you first first of all you need to get uh, all users. So uh, HTTP number n plus one or it's not only about HTTP. It's n plus one problem in math. When if you want to get five elements, you need to make six requests. 
So uh, what does it mean? It means when you have need to get all five users, first of all, you need to get uh, make a request to users to get everything, like at least like initial information about those users, and then get detailed information about each user. So to get information about five users, you need to make six requests. This problem has been resolved like very long time ago, like years ago, during the like couple requests or including the data like with details you can control in rest in different ways and there are a lot of um like how to say it? uh a lot of recommendations how to like resolve or avoid this problem in your rest api service uh but again the the people who uh try to operate this value don't really understand the main idea of GraphQL. It's not about the. It's not only about the request number. So uh, even when I like even in in example that I sh uh, I shown uh, for GraphQL, you you may notice that I make a request for users separately and then I make a request for separate users. But in case in case of like GraphQL, you make two requests instead of five. But anyway, it's more like I want to get this data with this problem. Uh, HTTP version three is almost out, and you like you like trying to operate GraphQL with HTTP one point one and so on and so on. So the problem is we don't have we don't even have the full support of HTTP version two. So I think Engine supported, but not fully. I think not all features supported by engines. Not all frameworks support HTTP version two. So it's like this uh, latest uh, ECMA. Uh, 2016 it just 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 integrated for everyone so it's like it's like three years from 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 that period that we have like good integration good support of the ECMA 2016 uh, or 2015 I don't remember ECMA 6 so and imagine how much time do we need to add support of HTTP number two version two it's like Plenty of time, and uh, I I know a lot of projects that do not uh, didn't switch to Python three till till like this period of time, and they still want to live with some mirrors and copies of uh, libraries and support. So yeah, it's not the case because it's like it's still in draft. I think the late uh, as I read the latest draft was sometime like a week ago. And I think that the earliest day we are going to see the release spec for HTTP version three would be some mid 2020. And even till that period of time, we, will, we won't get full support of HTTP version two in most uh, frameworks and servers. So it's not a case as well. Uh, this thing I hate in, GraphQL dry. So you need to copy paste a lot. So this this is a problem. Um, it would be like there, there are a very nice thing in GraphQL that called fragment that allows you to define uh, simple models, but anyway, uh, take into account that client defines um, The model, the structure, the schema, the data clients want to receive, client needs to duplicate a lot. So if you if you request the complex request, like if you request complex data or if you split something to the separate request, it would be like you need to copy paste. And this is a problem. But if you're okay with copy paste, if you don't really care about do not repeat yourself principle you're fine with this. Uh, as I mentioned, security. Security is a very big point uh, because of this nestedness. <clears throat> it would be very, very hard to even understand what are going to, what you are going to return to, uh, to client if client doesn't have access. So imagine that you have like uh, nestedness level three, like depth, depth three and client doesn't have access to something on the level two. Should we not define client? 
should be returned like uh, 2.3, should be like rising here. What should we do? So this is a problem that should be like managed by you. And in some cases, it might not be obvious like any solution, any might not be obvious at all. And this is a problem. And I think it's weakest point here as well. And basically you resolve the problem of uh, request and filtering data, but you bring up the new problem with checking the permissions, checking to the authorization to different kind of data. But it's not the case, if it's not the case for your application, go ahead. And in the importance, if you know what it is. Um, so the main idea of REST is to split request, like give me data, create data, uh, update data, remove data, patch data partially, uh, or patch everything partially. So GraphQL is kind of, doesn't really care. As you see, we, we, we all post, we all post, um, we all like, uh, say like give me the data and this is a payload this is a re my request and if you want to like um, update something or create something you use functions and you use functions in separate uh, separate section uh, mutate if you want to get data you like you get the uh, incorrect if you want to remove data the same you need to call function uh, that like we'll remove data for you uh, on the on the front that's on the backend side, and so basically you don't have CRUD as as you see it in uh, in REST as a idempotence uh, solution, but you will have RPC on the front and backend side communication that will allows that will allow you to that allows you to use function on the backend side to perform action from you, for you instead of you. Uh, that's about bad things about GraphQL that you might see or be familiar with. Do you have any question on this uh, level? If you have any, uh, you could ask it in in like Microsoft team in Skype for business anywhere, just reach me in any messenger you have. I will answer all of them. So let's go to the demo. Before, uh, does anyone know how to like, unpin it? Yeah, here. Uh, we don't need it anymore. Yes, yes, I want to leave it. So first of all, um, I will show you the uh, the example of like connection between objects uh, that could be really, really, really complicated. But how, like, basically the Voyager visualization visualization of uh, like connections between uh, separate objects. But from, from your perspective, it would be like simple, sim, simple object. So I will show you this API as well. So as you see, we have like separate object, like film, separate model. We have like requests, all films, film, all people, person, all planets, planet. So basically this one is just a get uh, parameters. And this one get by parameter, by ID or other, other things. And basically model film um, refers to the separate model and here and even this could refer to another one. And you see the like um, relationship between models is kind of rough, tough. And you might be confused how to implement this in REST, but in GraphQL it's super easy because relations here doesn't really matter. So you just point the model and that's all. And cyclomatic dependency that introduced here as well doesn't case pass as well. So uh, as you see models to models, different models to different models into models and this model is related to this and this to this. 
and that's kind of insane relationship. So let's start with the small example. I'm not going to give you uh, any <clears throat> any cheats. So this is a swap, like GraphQL application. Uh, this is a UI that GraphQL uh, provides you. So in the example I shown you, when you create as view GraphQL something something as view in Flask or Django, there is a uh, flag that graph IQL pro like true or false. If you set it as true, this page will be generated. Uh, after providing all schemas models, all schemas basically because responsible for this. Uh, you will get this documentation explorer and this one is like extremely awesome and extremely obvious for me because it allows you to uh, like explore object to navigate through the object so query so here as you see we have only query and this is a root model and what we see here everything we could get from this API so let's start Query, give me all films. Now, another one item. It helps you to, like, after completion is introduced here as well. And even if you do not provide uh, information about what are you going to return, it will fill in instead of you uh, in this uh, item later. As you see, uh, so edges and nodes, uh, don't like ignore it for now. Uh, it's because we have a list of items and like uh, we will we handle it in like using filters. So as you see, we like we request give me all films and for each node, give me ID. Then what we have in film, we, in film we have title okay so give me title nice new hope empire strikes back returns of the jedi this is a, the the most popular uh graphql example in internet so you will find it and as you see everything you like query will be saved in the url so you could share it uh you could share it and uh, only one thing i want to try to uh I want to try the GraphQL um, on the like how to say it uh, vulnerabilities because I imagine it would not stand well against any XSS uh, any XS attacks. So I'm not sure about this because for me security is kind of weak here and yeah it might be a problem. Then what we have then release date okay works for me producers it's a list. Give me producers. Thank you, producers, and I think that's all. Yeah. So yeah, I request this data. I get this data. Then very nice thing here that I could filter data. So you see, it provides me like after, first, before, last. So basically, it's like the same as. Uh, how to say it? Uh, it's kind of limit, or like it's more like a limit, but very like fancy way. Only one item you need to know that you need to implement this manually. Some of them, like after first, before last, there are order by and other like control words that you need to add support for. So imagine that I need to get first like two elements. I will get two, and that's all. So it will generate query using this, or after two. So it will. So uh, oh yeah, sorry. It should not be yeah last two. There is not. There is a string. It 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 expect query instead of five number. Last two. So it returns last last two. As you see, uh, after uh, or oh, first and last is more like slicing. One thing I'm not sure it will support after, like first and last. I think it will like 
tell me that you cannot use them both at the same time. No, you can. Nice. Uh, because GitHub does not allow me to do this. Uh, yeah, so I could do this. Then in the same query, like I could ask like film and then I request this. I need ID and title. And here I don't need this anymore. That's all. So as you see, it's like extremely easy to implement. And you could like duplicate it. You could do everything with this. You could mix up the data. Uh, so the, the, the biggest problem in all REST API that I faced with uh, was like were related to uh, concatenating data. So I'm going to concat this kind of data into this object and so on and so on, or I need to like get everything. So I'm trying to like create separate models. I'm trying to hack models, I'm trying to like convert them to JSON and concat JSON and so on and so on. But here it's out of the box. You will have this like just for free. And as I told, there is a like documentation that allows you to go through this information, and it's really obvious. There is page info, uh, like, uh, like sorry, there is like pagination that uh, works really well. I will show you. There is uh, like uh, sorting that works really well that allows you to provide the the the. The problem for REST API is to provide multiple sorting, for example, or multiple filtering. It's always, it's almost always like painfully. And, but here is just uh, like, yeah, like here, I will show you. So that's, that's very, very simple one, just to show you the like simple items. Um, another API will allow me to show you the, uh, the, I'm not sure I will show you mutation here because I want to show you on the GitHub, but as you see the pagination here provides us a like top object and I'm going to implement the page and inside the page I want to have information about Media ID, what I want to know, media type. What else we have here? Uh, media type, chapters, episodes. I think they have some like check mark on Star Wars. So I get one page, 12 element pay pay per page. Uh, oh, it's anima. Thanks. Um, and it returns me the first 12 elements. Then next request. And then I could do like this, like query some my page. Oh gosh, I think I, oh, it's, it should be integer. Integer. Uh, oh, yeah. Page query variables and uh, domain. Oh, yeah. Page. Hold on. I think no. I don't remember. I really hope it, it will help me with this. I'm not typing to your oh int, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's by, by default int. I don't remember. I, I totally forgot how to put what it was here. So basically, I, I will try to cheat and put it here. Yeah. 
Oh, Williams. Oh, it doesn't, this version doesn't allow me to do this. So basically I could define variables as a separate like query. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay, sorry. Uh, let's put three. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh gosh, I like this. It helps me because it's very, very hard to keep everything in my mind at the same time. So as you see, I could use variable. I could save this query inside somewhere uh, inside JavaScript and just call it with the page three. So, and so on and so on. And also in, with the paginated data about media, I could combine it with other paginated data with other items or, and I could add the user media as a single object by query by ID. And the, the best stuff here, and I'm going to finish, uh, uh, the GitHub. So this is me. I'm not very active at GitHub, like at all. So what I'm going to do is to request, I don't care about login, give me repositories. Repositories. Uh, ID, edges, okay. Then node. It's a lie, okay. ID. Give me all my repositories. Yeah. So what? What did I miss? Ah, oh, pagination boundaries. Uh, let's go to document. Let's go to query. Let's go to repository. And let's remember about pagination boundaries. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just remember it should be like, uh, as you see, it asked me to add pagination boundaries. And I need name, I think. Name and stars. No, it could be no. I need to start from the beginning, sorry. Uh, okay, viewer repositories first and after complete. And then name, because I need to know name. So test server, dear to SQL, PyPatch, patch, IPDB, something, um, well, new, new one. So what I'm going to do, it's I'm going to create repository. Uh, create, uh, add, uh, create, create repository. Oh, I document for create repository. There is a number of functions that allow to use. I need, I need, I can search here. Create, create pull request, create repository. So what I need to do, payload data, client need to pull. No, I need this input. Yeah, input, ask me name. Okay, because I need to have, oh yeah, input, sorry. Then name, let's call it uh, Python com, community, then, I think it's too big, yeah, like this. Then, no punctuation line. Then visibility. Visibility would be public, public. So repository visibility, just a num, so allows you to like define enums. And, but that's not all. I want to return repository. So as you hear, see here, repository payload, that's what are you going to return back from after creating this project? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have only ID because I will use this ID later. Uh, then 
I want I want to add star to PyPatch. Yes. PyPatch. So PyPatch we have with ID here. So add star input ID. So as you see, it doesn't like it doesn't care about uh, like it could be repository ID, it could be pull request ID, it could be user ID, it could be anyone, anything. It's like fully agnostic to the data we work with. And Starball ID, that's all. I think that's all. So this means so as you see, I have only like, I have 11 followers. That's too much. Uh, so I have like eight repositories, eight. I'm going to run it here, create error operation name is great with multiple. Oh yeah, sorry. I need to add name here. Good. Uh, great. So I will update it and end up with eight repository python.com and pypatch will be start. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all for basic knowledge for you. And as you see, like really cool. So what we have here in schema in query, we don't have a lot of objects like this mostly functions or something, but mostly we have user, viewer is a user, we have topic, uh, we have repository, uh, like organization and so on. So basically split, we have a node with like fully agnostic and nodes will contain only, only ID. And what, what does GitHub do? Uh, it, so it just uh, mapped one-to-one -one the solution with the REST API to GraphQL API. And you will have the same control over resources on the any deepness level. That's what I uh, like warned you. So be careful with the deepness level. Try to like put it on the on the higher deep level, on the like on the higher level. And but it allows you to control the data because I don't need and I don't need to have anything else here. I just need this kind of information and that's all. Yeah, so that's basically it. Does anyone have any question? So if you have what you sh too shy to ask, you can ask me online. It's not a problem. So I think that's all.